música na cabeça é carinho, alegria, inteligência, fantasia Prazer, doçura, energia, paixão e poesia Alô, alô? Alô, alô? Hello, friends. We're back on another episode of That Drawing Show, and I'm um, happy to be here. Uh, today we have a very special show because we're going to be looking at one of the great caricature artists of all time and one of the great uh, cartoonists, just more generally, illustrators of all time, a man by the name of Al Hirschfeld. Uh, and uh, there's a lot been written on him. There's a lot online uh, about him. and. Uh, Certainly, one great place to start is just Al Hirschfeld Instagram, A-L-H-I-R-S-H-F-E-L-D. We'll be seeing quite a bit more of it in a few moments. Um, I believe he has passed, but his family um, keeps the, uh, the uh, page alive. Um, Hirschfeld was the editorial page cartoonist for the New York Times for literally 70 years. And his drawings typically graced the front page of the arts and leisure section. And uh, as the New York Times for many, many years was nationally printed and distributed, it was the de facto tastemaker of uh, the entire country. And the opinions expressed on the arts and leisure page, uh, front page, uh, made or break, broke a theatrical performance, a musical act, and later on uh, movies. And he certainly covered everything from the vaudeville age all the way to the movie age. And everything in between, including the really the, the um, golden ages of show business, which I think we can all agree have long since passed. Um, today's project is to look over some uh, Hirschfeld drawings and try to do a little bit of categorization of some different motifs that are being used over and over again in terms of head shape because my assignment my assignment is uh to draw some caricatures in the style of al hirschfeld so in lieu of knowing the faces ahead of time uh i want to have some um archetypes you might say in mind um based on study of his work. So we're gonna do the study together and uh, we certainly have uh, some time here tonight. So uh, it's that drawing show. Let's play the intro and we'll come back with some Al Hirschfeld. Enjoy it. There's some things I have to say. None of them understand that, like, Cleveland is a bombed out third world hellhole. I go on and on. Well, that was tremendous fun. The cat. Cat hair apocalypse. Baby, it's like Mad Max, but with cats. Like cat apocalypse. For being on some chill shit. Hold on, got a whole lot of show for it. I mean, we can really get it. We can go for it. Hold on, got a whole lot of show for it. I mean, we can really get it. We can go for it. Hold on.
hypocrisy and nonsense. It's a combination of stupidity, incompetence, preening, posturing, and fraud. Hello, friends. We're back at that drawing show, and uh, we're about to take a look at uh, Al Hirschfeld. Let's uh, do it. Right on. Here we are. Um, the goal here today is not to create Al Hirschfeld drawings. Let's make that clear. Um, certainly, there would be other approaches to do that uh, if that was the goal. What I really want to do is study uh, what he's doing and um, try to create some categories for head shapes. Bear with my terrible friend now look at this look at this look at this forehead you would think i would be great at heading a soccer ball but i'm not um the instagram page like i said is probably being maintained by his family and uh god bless him. this face that i just did i think we're going to see more of and um I don't have any names to categorize them, but one thing I did want to mention about this particular um, drawing, and, and this is not going to be a great primer on Al Hirschfeld for anybody who thought uh, they were going to hear all about Al Hirschfeld. There's enough people doing that. And there's enough uh, momos out there doing that, but let's talk about this one in particular. Um, I don't know if it's Tina Turner. I don't know if it's uh, Whitney Houston. I don't care but um, look at the weight on the hair see a lesser artist like me would have really tried to balance out the stuff that's going on over here with something going on over here but by not doing that uh, you really create a nice sense of weight over on this side and it it just falls so nice and you know to uh, us baldies uh, that is very attractive um, so well done, Hirschfeld, in that score. And also, I think just a nice treatment in general of like uh, black women roots over here. I'm not talking about roots. I'm talking about hair roots. Like this just looks, his, his rendering of it just looks really realistic uh, to what uh, sisters have going on up there. Um, I think, you know, honestly, I think the key is these, these pieces right here that go, that go this way. He has a couple pieces that give you that motion and it's just sort of subtle, but it, it gives you the fold over and then everything else from there works. But really what I wanted to try to capture isn't so much that, uh, it is what we might call the, uh, the skull shape or, uh, you know, what, what we're doing from here. There's a cheek definition, always, and there's the sort of frontal uh, lobe <laughs> here, the bill, and then there's like going to be a lip area that I think is very clearly already done here, and the brow, but I mean like these elements are the elements, and I surmise we shall see them again, even without the really nice hair, you know? There's always like a little nose here. And I'm not saying that he's in error in using this. This seems to be a recurring archetype. Um, we're gonna be breaking stuff down along the lines of this. This is not worth keeping, this particular drawing, um, but it's just worth talking about. All right, so anyway, let's keep looking over here. Okay, so here we go, Michael Jordan. He was a basketball player for all you millennials out there. <laughs> Um, the one thing to notice if you are interested in Hirschfeld in general and in emulating his style as I shall be is that there is not a particularly exaggerated treatment of the figure it's not done to the same degree nearly as the face the face is clearly a cartoon the draw the body is a, a figure drawing um, although he does do some nice flourishes like around here you know what I mean um, it's nothing like this, for instance, you would expect, you know, more 
you know, like, I don't know, like a more angular or exaggerated musculature, more thin, where it doesn't, like, there's no need to make that that thick. I would tell. I would say, ow. Oh, my God. Um, but anyway, for what we're concentrating on, uh, I just want to take a look at the face here. Here, obviously, we're working in uh, a, three, a, th a third dimension, and we're working in a profile. It's really this one in uh, three quarters. Let me say that uh, there might be ways of organizing my visual space here that would be better if I was not doing a live stream. I want to make that clear. I might be working another way slightly, but you get the idea here. Okay, let's make one thing clear for all us newbies out there, like me. It's time to get this straight. This... Hold on a second here. <laughs> You're like, if, if you can draw the skull so good, why, can't, why do all the rest of your drawings suck? I don't know. Um, but anyway, here's a skull, all right? Okay, obviously we're not going to worry about that side, but just in terms of this side. This break here. Let's see here. Hold on. Thank God. This break here, first of all, first of all, first of all, this break here is not the same as this break here. Okay. Yeah, this break here is not the same as this break here. And uh, this is something that certainly I am guilty of uh, neglecting. Um, but anyway, in terms of uh, old Michael Jordan here, how does it manifest itself? Well, um, You got to make sure that this here. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. So it's really this one in uh, in uh, profile, but worth putting into a sort of. We can make this even even bigger. Oh, how nice, huh? Okay, uh, we will start categorizing them here in a moment, but let's just say that these guys right here, and 
and uh, for instructional purposes. We'll move him over here. Here. And this, we call it pro, we'll just, we'll just put it in there for profile for now. All right, MJ, thank you. Okay, Dizzy Gillespie. Let's not even try to explain to everyone who this is because the idea of jazz music is so anachronistic in the modern age, I can't even think about it. But it is a profile, and that is why we will talk about it for a moment. Uh, first of all, one of the things that makes um, Hirschfeld's work interesting is that he really tries to capture the right angle. And one of the things we don't do as caricature artists is do that. Some phases are best expressed, or some shapes are best expressed from one angle instead of another. And uh, if you try to compromise with that, you know, you are you do so at your own peril. Um, so, uh, this is one example, like, um, he's playing a, a trumpet. And uh, certainly, um, I have one of the, the uh, people that I have to draw is going to be a piano player. So, like, attention to these hands is going to be important at a later date. But for right now, um, for right now, Am I kind of regretting not getting, not just spending the money and getting the like 27 inch Cintiq? I don't know. If I was like a uh, iPad expert, then um, probably not, but I'm not. And I don't know about working on this tablet. I'm working on the, the large size Intuos. You know what I mean? Like the, the $400 Intuos, maybe it's $500, I guess. Into us, um, and uh, it's not great. Can you make great art on it? Of course, of course, of course. But in terms of like what what you want to do for characters, it's like this really um, certain one stroke drawing where it's just there's no control Z's and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Maybe not. Anyway. Um, What I can say about these two drawings, sometimes it's easier to look at two drawings and then make a statement than when you're just uh, with one um, on the first one. What I can say about this drawing is this, these two drawings is both of them have a remarkable interplay between two like primary shapes. And um, those primary shapes are dominant and they make the profile work and maybe it is the case that whereas in a front view you got so many features to worry about placing um, that you can uh, get away without having a dominant shape say for the jawline if somebody has a big fleshy face for instance um, on a profile view you know you've got to give people an idea of where is the next stalk and what is going on up here and then from there, you can create the eye line. Certainly the head in both cases is a circle and it intersects with, in one case, a big blown up balloon and the other case, a whoosh. Let's keep looking at our reference. See if, see if this repeats itself. Oh, okay, I think this must have been the, the guy I took it from. And then, of course, we have here uh, the uh, sort of, uh, he looks like a radio announcer. <laughs> I hope nobody can hear my uh, local Cleveland sports talk radio in the background. What can we say about this? Well, one thing is I like this um, um, Hanna-Barbera style muzzle. 
This is how the Hanna-Barbera characters were. And uh, this is a Hanna-Barbera nose, you know what I mean? This is like what uh, Fred Flintstone's nose and all the rest of them look like. Um, it breaks the plane. You know what I mean? It, it's, it breaks into the Z. So maybe that is a pattern to worth looking for. It's sort of a flat presentation and the, uh, of the of one level and then one thing breaking the, breaking the plane like that. Here on the girl, do we have not a profile? No, but we do have a um, a ball and muzzle. Maybe we can call it that a ball and muzzle. Ball muzzle stock. I hope that came through on the uh, on the screen. Hold on a second here. Oh. Anyway, ball muzzle stock, people. This is the intersection of the sphere and the muzzle shape, you know. This one we've seen. Okay, here we go. Uh, this might be another Michael Jordan, but it's constructed a little bit differently. It's, it's worth looking at. This is very much like this one. I don't think there's any question about it, right? And worth noting, too, like, you got this piece, you have the eye line, you have the strong cheekbones. Differentiate the cheekbone from the jaw line. Nose here, lip comes right down. You know what I mean? It's the same. Okay, okay. I'm trying to keep the show moving here. I think I have other examples. Let me close these. Oh, I think I closed everything. Hold on, let's get back to it. This. And... Yeah, we have many more examples. Fear not, people. I hope the music doesn't run out. Let's see, is the music playing? I think the music may have stopped playing. Let's cue the music again. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, this may not work. Let's see if this works. That's what I wanted to do. Mm, mm, mm. Good. Bring you over here. Thank you. Yeah, nice. Okay, people. Let's get back to it. Okay, we have Betty White. Betty White. Um, here we have... I feel, I feel another, oh, did we lose our, um, Michael Jordan? Yeah, we did. I don't know where that went. 
but it was really the same thing and so is this you know so is this it's a strong brow line here so strong cheeks here the muzzle is tiny that's her shtick she had a little tiny mouth allegedly uh, and here's the jawline we're gonna probably end up going back to that Jordan I think it's worth um, looking at again in that respect you can always rewind the video right Ooh. How awful. That didn't come through. Here he is. Here's the man. Right? Remember him? It was the same thing. It's this, which here Hirschfeld renders in Hirschfeldian manner with this sort of interesting pattern texture, but it doesn't really matter. The eye line, the nose for symmetry there. Strong cheeks here on this side. And we talked about how. The brow line merges into the cheeks there. Muzzle. Make sure you have your jaw here. give everybody vertigo, including me. Okay. There has to be a match between this side and this side, people. Okay, anyway, here's Michael Jordan. Um, and then they puts the uh, ear up here. I have to say it's a bit simian for me. And uh, one thing about Michael Jordan is he wasn't simian. He didn't look uh, like Patrick Ewing. Uh, he had a very refined uh, visage, like uh, Kobe Bryant, in that regard. Um, okay. Here's a nice uh, compound. There's several spaces to study here. It needs to be um, sharpened a bit. Let's see if we can first adjust the levels a little bit. Just give me the blacks. And then... I think that looks better. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break though, so let's uh, take a break and we'll come back to it and take a look at these and uh, see what we can pick out of this uh, menagerie, you know. Apocalypse. I've been in this a long time. You know, I've been here with everything.
para ti, mi corazón es para ti, mi corazón es para ti, mi corazón. Well, we're back on that drawing show. Uh, my back is killing me. That's one of the reasons I took that break, and I don't think it was nearly long enough. Uh, we're not going to go too much longer here tonight. This is just an introduction to the Hirschfeld Drawing Project. Um, it's certainly uh, something that is going to take a couple days, and uh, you'll be with me every step of the way. Uh, here we are again looking at um, this compound image. I think that this guy up here kind of represents the archetype that we've seen before from Jordan at all. time and I wasn't. Alright, terrible, terrible job. Anyway, um, I bet you I did actually hit separate layer and it just didn't register. But you can see here on, in Hirschfeld's work there's just a, a, a solid attention to, uh, there's a solid attention to line of symmetry and also just the basic anatomy. Here he stretches a little bit because he wants to give this guy this uh, sinister smile here. You know, he, he has it all in there, even though the face is exaggerated, um, it's in there. I, I think mine is a little bit more tilted in three quarters than his, but... I guess it's not about drawing it in my interpretation. It needs to be tilted. It needs to be rotated a little bit that way. Um, yeah, let's, let's deal with this lounge singer guy down here. This must surely, it's a profile. It must surely be an example of the ball, who in this case has a crazy hairdo, and the muzzle.
Yeah, I don't think uh, it's so great. Let's try again. Here's the ball, here's the muzzle, you might even say that here's the muzzle and here's the jaw, maybe that's what I'm missing in my analysis, there is a clear brow line here. From the standpoint of design, I'm not willing to give up totally on this idea. Let's look at the uh, beautiful lady here. I mean, this is certainly a three-quarter. Uh, pose and maybe more so than with his male figures uh, no I mean I was gonna say it's more anatomically no it's not it's still very stylized it's there's a tiny little mouth down there This is her cheek line, but he also makes it a hairline, which was part of the 60s, 70s, yeah. So yeah, I mean, uh, you know, there's more to the uh, caricature than what I'm drawing, but in terms of the face, Oh. It's a very uh, anatomically aware uh, treatment of the skull. All right, let's look at the last two on this page. The blondie here, um, I think, really is a uh, example of this bad boy. In this case, there isn't that much puffing out into the Z, and that's kind of the point of her of her caricature. That's her shtick, is that she doesn't have a big nose. Um, her face is tilted up a bit that way. Um, he doesn't do a ton in a blonde woman with the hair. He just does a couple strokes because he doesn't want to make it too, too dark. I wish I followed that advice. Um, that's one eye. That's another eye. Brow line, the nose. His idea of the muzzle here, sometimes he just does that front there. Depending on how sensitive you are with that, you can imply a lot with uh, uh, just a line there in that particular place on the face. I'm sorry. You're using uh, hotkeys, it can, it can be that fast.
Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't want to get too much into the shape of the of the hair. The point of this is um, it's another example of a very flat presentation of the face. It can be almost mapped out in. Properly, there we go. Properly do this. It could be mapped out, you know, in that kind of way. The same as the guy. And finally, this guy over here. This guy. This is kind of Joker. Oh, how I love it when I have to perform for men like this. Um, for this, there's certainly an example of like if you want to have a powerful caricature, a powerful face, you have to have that neck in there, and you have to use that force drawing method to give you uh, hard lines of force you know, with the sideburns here, 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 between that sideburn and this little hint of a jaw, it's very, very similar to what we saw up over here. This guy rightfully belongs. Over here. Look how the interface is fighting. Like, when would that ever be the right thing? Oh my god, the people who made this thing never have to deal with the concept. Okay. Um, So, um, I think that does it for that page, and uh, probably for this, uh, for this night on the show. Um, this is a great page worth looking into for not only a catalog of Hirschfeld's great work and a study of uh, his methods, but a catalog of pop culture and the uh, golden age of uh, television and movies. And um, in this case, lounge acts. And, uh, you know, the old days when people would actually go out and watch music live. Um, and wear funny uh, bow ties and, uh, you know, satin jackets. Anyway, uh, it's been great to see everybody uh, thank you for all your support on YouTube and on Instagram. And uh, anybody who leaves a comment in the comment section, I'm sure lead to respond to it. And I'm happy to uh, look at your work and tag me on Instagram, share with your friends. And most of all, happy drawing. It's that drawing show. Thank you.